So I would also like to thank the organizers uh, very much for this opportunity to uh, speak here, and um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so my, my talk is going to be based on a paper I wrote from last summer. It's going to be based on this paper, uh, Turbulent and Dimensional, Eleven Dimensional Superspace. And uh, it treats the problem of the expansion of the super two by the eleven dimensions. Uh, the so-called theta expansion, where theta is the super partner of the bosonic coordinate. Uh, so in particular, um, <coughs> it, also, it also treats the problem of the theta expansion of all super theta. In the so this is the layout of myself. Um, I'm going to start with some um, introductory remarks and some motivation. And here's where uh, memories are going to come in. And uh, I'm going to set up the problem and my motivation for it. And then I'm going to uh, introduce 11-dimensional uh, superspace and uh, the superspace formulation of uh, the ordinary commercial uh, uh supergravity, which is the most convenient um, way to treat this problem, the most efficient way. And then I'll come to the um, uh, main part of the talk, which is the main uh, results. Um, I will describe in what sense one can actually derive new all-order um, results, all-order in the theta expansion. And uh, I will end with some uh, discussion. So, um, we now know that uh, we should think of perturbative string theory as embedded in some more complete theory, which is named, usually named M theory. And um, M theory has uh, reduced the low energy, effectively, field theory limit to ordinary 11 dimensional supergravity. Um, 11 dimensional supergravity contains this uh, extended object, the supermembrane. This has been known for some time, uh, extending two dimensions and one. The representation of uh, the membrane <coughs> should have something to do, uh, the microscopic description of M theory should have something to do with quantizing the membrane. Um, unfortunately, um, this direct approach is uh, a little too naive. And uh, it's played with all sorts of difficulties, um, conceptual and technical. Um, things are not so nice for the membrane as for the stream. But uh, it was realized early on in the unit that there is a certain regularization one can perform on the um, world of theory of the membrane, which leads to uh, a certain uh, type of matrix model. Um, Matrix, supersymmetric matrix quantum mechanics. So this is not quite the matrix model we heard about. Um, this used to be the new matrix model, but now it's the old one because the old one has the surface. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, in, in fact, the, in the early days, the interpretation of, of this uh, matrix quantum mechanics. So it was it was very exciting to, to think that uh, one could capture the um, the physics of M theory using this simple, in a sense, uh, matrix model, but in fact, uh, interpreting this was, was problematic because of several things, among which uh, is the continuing spectrum, and which was thought to signal the membrane instability. But in more recent years, um, this was reinterpreted um, within the banks fischler system uh, schenker uh, conjecture as. Um, a model which captures the physics of M theory in a certain uh, very special background um, in the light cone. Um, and not, not much can be said about generalizations of this very specific background, and, 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 and in particular, not much can be said about curved backgrounds. Um, so, uh, uh, this is hardly a, a very satisfactory story. Uh, another, there's a more pragmatic approach to this, um, which which um, uh, says um, 
I don't know what the fundamental theory is, but let's try to postulate what scattering amplitude uh, should be. So one starts by actually postulating scattering amplitudes and try to compute a more pragmatic uh, approach. Um, there has been some work uh, on this um, using light cone vertices, uh, vertex operators for, for the supermembrane, um, which has not gone that far. In particular, uh, these people with um, Atleska, Nikolai, uh, Piolin, uh, et al. Um, uh, have mentioned some. Um, have not been able to reproduce the Virasoro amplitude, for example, for the supermembrane. So this has not gone very far. But more recently, there's a more exciting prospect because uh, now um, we have a complete uh, proposal um, within the context of Berkowitz's approach to the quantification with both the supermembrane and the, and the superstring. Um, so within the pure spinner approach to uh, of Berkowitz, we now have a proposal, a concrete proposal for what the scattering amplitudes for the supermembrane should be. Um, Okay, granted that um, there will be some conceptual issues about how to interpret, interpret these scattering amplitudes. Uh, nevertheless, I think it's really important to uh, try to compute um, um, some, some of these scattering amplitudes. Um, so this is a, a very important motivation um, uh, for me. And uh, another place where um, my motivation comes from is, is trying to compute the effect of um, membrane and the fine grain, uh, by the way, in symptoms. And what I'm going to say about membranes is readily generalized for the for the fine grain. Um, so, in in compactifications um, on 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 certain internal spaces, the membranes or the fine fibrins uh, can wrap uh, cycles in the internal directions, and this produces non-perturbative effects. These effects are seen as non-perturbative effects, which contribute to the support potential along the uh, space-time direction. And this has uh, uh, found, uh, these types of effects have found um, very important applications in recent scenario, which have caught a lot of, have attracted a lot of attention recently. Um, so for, for all these applications, one needs the component form of the work volume theory of the membrane action. And uh, I'm going to explain uh, <coughs> what I mean by that. So the 11 dimensional supermembrane is perhaps most elegantly described by uh, a super um, And it's given by a, a super embedding from three dimensional world volume bosonic space, 3 slash 0, to 11 dimensional super space, which has 11 bosonic and 32 fermion components. And uh, here, uh, Z for me uh, is the super coordinate, splits in bosonic coordinate x and fermion coordinate mu, uh, theta mu, and, and uh, I'm using the standard supermembrane nomenclature where by uh, underlying indices you know target space indices. And the theory is very simple. It is given by a Vesuvino term, which is simply the pullback of the super freeform potential. Uh, the Vesuvino term is simply the pullback of the freeform uh, background uh, super potential. Uh, Eleven dimensional background field C, uh, plus the Green Schwartz metric, uh, the, the determinant of that, which is given by uh, by this, and uh, eta is the Minkowski metric in target space, and E is the super field line of the target Eleven dimensional super space, and depends on both the uh, bosonic coordinate and the fermionic super partner of the bosonic coordinate. And so um, we need to know, in order to know the component form of the, of the supermembrane action, we need to know the expansion of this object. And of course the expansion of the C field and, and, and everything. But um, so we will be able to, to, to treat the 
problem in one go. Um, so, so this this theory, uh, the, the, the the degrees of freedom of, of this theory, the world volume theory, are just x and theta. And in order to, for me to be able to know explicitly the theory, I need to be able to expand this up. So, so this is not. Um, that, that, that's not a very um, now doing this order by there there is there is a way to do this order by order in, in theta uh, that has been known for some time and it's called uh, gauge completion. And this is uh, perhaps a terrible way to, to treat this problem. Uh, one pretends that there are no superfields and reconstructs the superfields from scratch. It's extremely tedious and uh, it, it is also ambiguous. So. It's, it's, it's not the best way to, to treat this, and uh, no wonder um, there had, uh, one has been able to go only up to say that square uh, in this expansion uh, in practice. Um, so now I'm going to to, to describe um, a, a superspace um, method, a method which is based in superspace um, of how to obtain these expansions, but. Um, and, and indeed, in, in my paper, I was able to go up to theta to the, to the five. But of course, it's a little uh, silly to try to iterate order by order all the, all the way to theta to the 32. This is uh, impossible in practice. So one, one should, should ask if there's any sense in which we can get all other results, uh, results to all order in theta. And um, uh, th there are known results to, to all order in theta only in the special case of maximally supersymmetric bosonic backgrounds. This is the only case in which uh, uh, explicit results have been known. But, um, well, since last summer, uh, 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 we know, um, um, I have derived the all order result for, for the theta expansion in the case of uh, uh, a linear background. So literally in the background fields, uh, we now know the all order theta uh, um, expansion in, in a closed form. And uh, here's uh, how, how this works. Um, let me start with um, uh, the superspace the super formulation of uh, elementary supergravity. Again, this is uh, well known. Uh, my notation is capital um, Latin letters from the beginning of the alphabet are flat, uh, you know, flat coordinates, and this is not nine, this is ten. Um, uh, bosonic is is uh, uh, Latin, and fermionic is lowercase uh, Greek, and so uh, in this formulation, the theory is, is elegantly described um, using the idea. <coughs> Uh, and I have introduced the usual superspace machinery, which is field lines, connection, and torsion, and super curvature. And we have two, two types of Bianchi identities the super torsion Bianchi identities and the super curvature Bianchi identities. And the second one is redundant thanks to Dragon's theorem uh, in the case where the, uh, we have imposed the Lorentz condition on the connection. So, uh, thanks to Paul Howe, we know that um, uh, ordinary limited dimensional supergravity, conventionally after supergravity, follows from uh, from this very simple constraint on the lowest part of the uh, torsion, of the three-dimensional um, torsion component of. Um, so you set the zero-dimensional part of the torsion equal to a gamma matrix, and this is enough to reproduce ordinary 11 dimensional supergravity. It's a very elegant formulation. It um, uh, completely solves the theory for you, puts the theory on the shell, and uh, tells you what the equations of motion are, and um, also how the spinner derivative acts on the superfluids. And that's uh, very important for, for our application here, because naively, you would expect the theta expansion to be generated by uh, the action of the spinorial uh, derivatives on the super. So in order to go up n levels in the theta expansion, I have to act n times by the spinor derivative naively. In fact, it's not uh, exactly 
exactly like that because there will be uh, terms which which mix uh, all levels, uh, lower levels among them. But uh, it is almost it is almost like that, and um, it, it can be made precisely as simple by a certain gauge fixing procedure, which is known as the um, well, it turns out to be equivalent to the normal coordinates uh, introduced in the 80s. Um, so, here's, uh, here's my notation. I, I denote by n superscript the nth level in the feedback expansion of any superfluid S. Um, so, <coughs> one observes that there, there are enough uh, parameters in the super morphisms and in the Lorentz transformations to set these components of the field line and the connection to zero, the totally anti-symmetric bit. And these are written more concisely and equivalently in this form. And this is exactly a way to look at the normal coordinates. Um, so, uh, what is more, um, this formula here says that uh, the spinner derivative exactly acts in this particular gauge uh, fixing acts exactly like, uh, like an ordinary uh, derivative by theta. So, um, and therefore, uh, that's exactly what happens in, um, in a, uh, that's, what happens is exactly what one would like to happen naively. Namely, one goes up r uh, levels in the theta expansion, starting from the n minus r level, by acting by the spinner derivative r times. This is very convenient because uh, we know, as I said, the theory is completely solved by closing this constraint. And, and in particular, we know how the spinner derivative acts, precisely how it acts on the superfields. So we know everything we need to know to generate the theta expansion. And um, so one can iterate this form formulae and obtain the theta expansion to any desired order. But as I said, uh, perhaps that's not the most clever thing to do. And one would like to know, uh, if there are any cases where we can um, obtain all other results? And in fact, um, the case where we can actually do that is uh, the case of interest, um, uh, as, I, as I will explain. Because it's, uh, it's a case uh, which is relevant uh, when one tries to compute the uh, vertex operators, which is the linearized approximation. Except the, the, the vertex operators are the linear couplings of the membrane to the background. And that's exactly the approximation in which I will be able to obtain all other results. Um, and by the way, I should also perhaps mention that, as I said in the beginning, uh, there are uh, there is a uh, there is a, a case where all other results are known, um, and this is the case of maximally supersymmetric superspaces. I should just um, uh, perhaps I should just mention that these previously known results are very easily reproduced in this formalism. Uh, the the derivation is half a page. It, it's very simple in this uh, setting. <coughs> And of course, it agrees with the existing literature. Um, okay, so now I come to the to the main result uh, of the talk. And um, so first, one observes that if I knew if I knew the theta expansion of the superfield T, T is the gravitational field strength. If I knew the theta expansion of, the, uh, of, the, of t to all orders, I would be able to derive any theta expansion of any other superfield. Um, that follows uh, simply from the uh, recursion relations I, I can derive. Um, next, uh, I observe that um, I can reformulate my, my recursion relations in, 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 in such a way that the uh, nth level of the theta expansion of, of this t, and now I'm using a very schematic notation, so t is the gravitational field strength, psi is the gravitational, 
R is the curvature, G is the super 4 form, the field strength of the super 3 form. Uh, uh, D is just an ordinary bosonic derivative. And O is an operator, which is quadratic in theta, and it's a derivative operator. So, uh, coming back to this formula, I observed that uh, the end level of the theta expansion of T is of this form. So, it's, uh, it has a linear piece, a linear um, uh, given by n over 2 uh, or n minus 1 over 2, depending on the uh, whether n is odd or even, um, acting on, on the gravity node here and acting on this particular combination of curvature plus uh, derivative of the one derivative of the super four form, plus nonlinear pieces. But um, in the linear approximations, uh, in the linear approximation, I can simply drop them, uh, drop these species, and I have the complete theta expansion of t. And now it's just a, a matter of turning the, uh, the crank to obtain all the other theta expansions for the field buying, etc. And all the details can be found in the paper. I, I just uh, I would just like to make the the, the point here. Um, if one does not want to drop out these, if, if, if one doesn't want to drop these terms, uh, one can simply iterate the procedure to the next order in, in the background fields. Just uh, solve linearly, plug the result in U, and iterate the procedure or the virus. But uh, and for, the, for the application of finding the perfect operators, the linear result suffices. So one can simply uh, drop these ex uh, uh, these U's here and um, use uh, these expressions. Um, so so the, the, the problem is solved to all, all orders in, in theta and um, uh, let me just show you in an expansion around flat space, and let me just show you uh, how um, somewhat more explicitly what the solution looks like. So uh, here is this operator O, uh, more explicitly, is given in terms of this uh, um, object M, which is made of gamma matrices. So it does not, uh, and, it's and it's quadratic in theta, it contains two thetas and a bunch of gamma matrices. The explicit expression is not particularly illuminating. Uh, it can be found in line paper. And the uh, solution for T looks like that. Um, so T naught is the uh, theta equal zero part of the Gravitino field strength. It's essentially a derivative of, uh, on the Gravitino. And uh, T1 uh, is given by the um, uh, theta equals zero component of the curvature and the theta equals zero component of dg. And so uh, it's, it's a quite concise closed expression. Um, one can go, can go on and um, compute all the components for the field bind, etc. Um, perhaps uh, just to show you some some transparency that it's not particularly illuminating. Um, this is what type of expressions uh, one gets. Um, all the gory details uh, can be found in the And one can uh, repeat the procedure for, for the C field and obtain um, uh, the theta expansion for the C field uh, as well. Um, now, um, so coming back to the supermembrane, uh, perturbing linearly in the field, uh, I get uh, this expression for the action, where I have the flat, flat piece uh, denotes the part of the membrane action in flat target space. And uh, this, this expression is, is well known <coughs> by that. Uh, the, the new piece is, uh, is given by the perturbation, 
and one should plug in the expression for delta G and delta C uh, that uh, I have uh, just uh, derived for you. And uh, so this gives the linear coupling of the membrane to the background and is enough to read off the, um, the vertex operator. Um, I haven't gone that far, and, and 
it's natural to expect that uh, there, there should be some simplification occurring in this case because there's a lot of supersymmetry. But um, yeah. I don't know how to do that. Thank <laughs> you.